Welcome back to the show. We're talking about the controversy over football's World Cup going to Qatar in 2022. Joining us now via Skype from Riyadh is Abdul Rahman Al Abdul Jabbar. He is a television sports show host in Qatar. Welcome to the show, sir. Uh, thank you very much and thank you for being with you. So, in awarding this event to Qatar, FIFA said that it wants to expand the sport, that it wants to make it more popular, and of course this is the first time it's going to an Arab country. So, what would the event mean for the Arab world? Well, for us as a citizen in Qatar and the Arab world, that's, that's been always a dream to host such an event like that. So, uh, I think this is a dream come true, just to feel uh, what everybody is feeling uh, now it's time to uh, for us in Qatar to ha to host such an event like this so it's been always a dream right that dream coming true for you has been uh, accompanied by a great deal of controversy let's talk about the recent FIFA investigation and the summary of that FIFA report do you believe that Qatar is now uh, fully in the clear from these bribery allegations that have been raised now we are officially clear because Everybody was talking about the situation and uh, a lot of people are talking and some people believe in that. So now investigation of uh, Garcia, uh, that's a proof for all the world that Qatar is, have rights to do the event and everything is clear. So this is for us. And we, we already know that uh, as a Qatari that we didn't do something wrong because we are doing this in the right way. Uh, and why we won, everybody was, uh, they don't believe it. So. That's why they are, you know, they, they sometimes, they want to know why Qatar won it. And they say some bad things about us. But now this is a proof to all the world that we can do that. And we are all clear to host this event. Okay, choosing Qatar to host the 2022 World Cup. Uh, the former chairman of the English Football Association, David Bernstein, he said in an interview with the British television network, and I'll quote to you what he said. He said, choosing Qatar was one of the most ludicrous decisions in the history of sport. Well, this is funny, actually, because, you know, you've never been to Qatar. How do you know it's not going to be like that? Because if you come to Qatar and see how it is, you will definitely know how good it's going to be. Because I'm inviting all the world to come to Qatar, just to come any time, any day, any day in the year, before the event. Just feel, how is Qatar? And you will know that. Qatar is the best place, and you will show, you will, it will show that Qatar is going to host the best World Cup in the world. So this is, I'm sure about that, and everybody, when they come to Qatar, they will know that Qatar is going to host the best World Cup ever. Okay, a lot of the world has been to Qatar, and what they've found is not very good. There's been a great deal of criticism in, uh, about the way Qatar treats migrant workers. There have been reports of many deaths. Um, your sports minister is saying that they are dealing with the issue, but what can you tell us? What's being done? Well, actually, uh, there, no, there was no death as well, as, at all. Never been an accident of death. But there is, the, the problem was is, uh, just, you know, some delay payments and some, uh, some of, there is no ministry of uh, workers. This, you know, small things that already has been done in Qatar now. The workers are, are, are always happy, and everybody in, is happy now. They, they are one of our community now, now our, uh, because in our community, uh, so they are one of us now. It's not just workers just working for us. They are also uh, one of us, so they are, we, we treat them as a citizens now. Uh, some issues, some laws that have been changed just for them. They can, like, uh, for contract term, termination, these kind of things, just small things, just to make it perfect. But for workers, everybody is happy there. Everybody will want to come to work in Qatar. And, all, all the, uh, when, and we never have any accident of death. Uh, some people are saying that, but I am in Qatar. I never heard anything like this. And I didn't see anyone dying there. And no, nobody di uh, died uh, when he works. Maybe some accident, there, something happened this, uh, everywhere in the world. So something is always happening. Okay, but there is no that, bad thing going on. That is not what some major investigations by very reputable newspapers have found out, as well as human rights organizations, both Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International. Uh, and as I said, several investigations carried out by respected newspapers show massive worker exploitation in Qatar. There have been up to 1,000 deaths, many of them cardiac arrest, 184 cardiac arrest. The International Labor Organization, a UN body, reports 
that workers work up to 100 workers a week. They have their passports confiscated. They cannot leave without getting an exit permit. Uh, that's what already I said, that uh, some of the rules are already changed. So now, uh, and, and the Qatar government is working on it to make it more perfect than ever. So we are actually fixing all of these things. Uh, and everything is now, I think, clear. And we, they already did some changes. So, so now I think for workers, it's going to be more better than what they see before 10 years ago. So workers can have their passports back, they can leave whenever they want to, they get a decent wage, they don't get paid 75 United States cents an hour, as the Daily Mirror said? No. It's already been changed. Okay, let's move on to the tournament itself. Uh, what about the heat? Can Qatar put on a tournament that'll take place when we know temperatures reach to over 50 degrees Celsius? I mean, is this going to be safe for the players? Is it going to be safe for fans who come to Qatar? See, let me tell you, Qatar won the bid wanted to, they said that they were hosted in the summer. So, uh, so the summer reason, we have some issues as a, as a weather, but we have some uh, things going on better because we are having our air conditioning uh, stadiums. And we tried this before and it's work. Every, every player who played in this, uh, in this stadium as air conditioning stadium, they are, the spectators also are feeling good. So when it's outside 50 degrees, as you say, it's going to be inside 20, 23 degrees uh, Celsius. So uh, nobody can feel the heat when they are inside the stadiums. Also in the fan zones, also in the, all the places in Qatar, it's been air conditioned. So uh, you cannot feel the heat all the time because everything is indoor. So uh, when we have the, uh, the stadiums, the stadiums are not indoor, but you know, there is the air conditioner stadiums. We try this and it works. So we can show the people how Qatar is going to, to show you how uh, air conditioning stadiums going to be. And also for the heat, you know, it's, um, it's a weather, but for us, it's, it's, it's okay, because if you are there, it's not like you can compare it with some, uh, some places of the, of, of the world, because in the heat in 50 degrees, you cannot compare it with 30 degrees in, in, uh, in Europe, because it's also the same, but you cannot feel the difference. Right, we haven't seen this technology work yet, but just getting back to choosing Qatar as the host uh, in 2022, given those conditions that I've just said, in May, Sepp Blatter, the FIFA president, said it was a mistake to choose Qatar as a host country for the World Cup. And that's what also Blatter said in, in the FIFA uh, website. He denied what he, he said, that he didn't say that. And he said that we chose Qatar and it's going to be in Qatar. So people say that that Blatter said that, and Blatter itself says, I didn't say that. What about security concerns? Uh, this is the Middle East. It's a violent part of the world. Of course, but Qatar is part of Middle East as well. You know, uh, Middle East is, has a lot of countries. For me, I'm, I, I, I live in Qatar, but now I have some, some business trip here in, United, uh, in, here in, K, in uh, Saudi Arabia. I never locked my door. My uh, house is open. I see how safe it is. So uh, Qatar is the most safest place in the world. So we never uh, have any problems. Uh, and I don't think that there's something we're going to happen in Qatar. But in the Middle East region, everybody thinks that Middle East is all the same. But there is countries and there is places that is different than what they think. Another issue that's popped up uh, while people have been considering Qatar, been talking about Qatar hosting the World Cup, and that is whether alcohol is going to be served to fans to other visitors who are coming to Qatar during the World Cup? Is alcohol going to be served there? Not just in fancy hotels, I mean, on, at the stadiums, on streets, in bars, etc. Well, well, now it is there in Qatar. We have alcohol, but this is not the best reason. I mean, you Yeah, but it's say confined that. to very expensive hotels. You can't walk into any no. place in Qatar and get alcohol. Why that? Uh, you can't can come to Qatar. I you have been see. to Qatar, sir. That's Yes. Yeah. But there is places if you want. There is places, but this yeah, is not the biggest. I, I, but you know, the, the World Cup. If you are going to somewhere, if you're going to somewhere, anywhere in the world, you have to, 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 you have to, you know, to have, you have to be there and you have to expect what uh, citizens or, or the country, because, you know, if you go to Japan and you smoke there, they, you cannot smoke in, in any place. But if you go somewhere else, you can smoke any place you like. So you have to go through the rules of the country. But for us, this is not just 
or I'm saying not saying no, but there will be a, a chance for people who are alcoholic to drink, not just in fancy hotels. Okay, so we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks for joining us. And that's it for this edition of The Heat. We'd love to hear from you, so please send us your questions, comments, and story ideas to theheat at cctv-america.com. We'd also like to continue the conversation on social media. Give us your thoughts and comments on our Facebook uh, page. That's at CCTV America. I'm Arnold Nido in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being with us.